Hello, everybody. Welcome to the LA Connection Comedy Improv for Teens. Good for the whole family. This is a virtual show here from the LA Connection Comedy Theater in Burbank. We're coming to you live into your living rooms. This show is unedited. Everything you see is done on the fly. We have a great cast of eight here today. My name is Kent Scove. I'll be your announcer today. And here's our cast today. We have Riley. There's Riley. We have Cringy Minji. We have our guest, who's also Eddie. We have our other guest, who's Olive. There's Olive. She's going to get her. There she is. We have Justin. We have Claire. We have Rhea. And we have Rain. And that's our lovely cast today. And now let's bring on our host for today's show, Mr. John Darden. John, you got to unmute yourself. You're a great host, but you need to unmute. I told you yep. everything's on the fly here today. There he goes. I am going to demand that people learn to lip read through this beard. And that's the first lesson of this show, that if you can't lip read through this beard, you've learned nothing during this quarantine. Um, we've got an exciting show. Thank you, Kent. And... Uh, just to remind everybody, we didn't plan this, we didn't script this, it's all made up on the spot, and it's gonna be based off suggestions. So our first show, that our, our first game that our team cast is gonna perform for you is called Opening Lines, and we're gonna give these performers the first line of their scene, and they're gonna take it away from there. So Kent, what's an opening line for our first two performers? You know, John, I've got a great opening line for you. It was sent in by somebody who just texted me, and it said, you should have told me and then, of course, your actors will fill in from the rest. You should have told me is the opening line. Okay, let's have two performers unmute themselves. You should have told me. Take it away. You should have told me. I, I'm sorry. I should have. I, I know I'm letting him live in our garage, but he's just such a cute alien. Okay, but he's from the planet Zorp, and everyone knows they, that they have different political views than us. But Zorp is a nice place. There's people of all different like shapes and sizes and like wits. It, it's it's just like Earth, but everybody's gray. Gray is just it's such an ugly color. And I know that you call me racist every day, but I am a proud American. I will not let you culturally appropriate these poor aliens. All right, they have suffered enough at Save. the hands of this. Scene. Good, good, good. That was our opening game. Hot, our, our, uh, hot off the gate. Let's get another two people and another opening line. Kent, what do we got? Uh, the, well, you can throw the same opening line, John. You should have told me. Oh, that's right. The same one for each one. You should have told me. Who's got a new scene using you should have told me? Riley, go ahead. Start it up. You should have told me. Looks like Minji is your scene partner. Go ahead, Minji. I'm so sorry. I I knew that I should have told you that you were adopted, but I, I was too scared. Too scared to tell me that you're not my real parent? Uh, look, it's fine. I love you the same way, and we could go to Disneyland tomorrow. Like, you're still my child. Am I, though? <laughs> Okay, well. Scene, we'll call it right there. Good, good, good. Uh, two more, same opening line. You should have told me, but a completely different scene. Who's gonna do it? Unmute yourself. You should have told me. I know I should have told you that I actually have a pet lion before you came to my home, but but well, he's like a dog to me, or, or a cat, because lions are felines. I understand that you like your lion, but not at the expense of my cat. Okay? Sorry, I don't think this relationship is going to work. It isn't. I think we're going to have to put this lion down. Scene. Good. Uh, and, and now we're left with Rhea, and uh, who's our final performer? Claire, is that right? Oh, Olive, Olive. that's right. Okay, what do we got? You know the line, take it away. You should have told me. I'm sorry, I just wasn't comfortable admitting the truth that I am, in fact, 
a Democrat. I'm very sorry to let you down, Mom. In the sweet, sweet state of Alabama, I understand that this is very hard on you. I understand that I may be a disappointment to you, but this is who I am. I can't change the fact that I am a Democrat. It is in my blood. It is in my, it's part of my psyche. I just, it's not something I can change. No matter well, how we've much gone to, We've gone to Trump rallies together. You wore the MAGA hat. I'm, I'm really sorry. Scene, good. That's opening lines. Everybody give him a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. Okay, cool. Hold on. Why, why, John's going away. The next game is, is radio cool. call-in. John's going to be getting into, he's our DJ today. And John, I know you need a suggestion. And the suggestion I got from the audience today was, should we close, keep, you know, keep shut down here in Los Angeles, or should we open? And this could, of course, be for different parts of the country as well. Should we stay shut down or should we open? And you're going to have radio callers calling you, John. Let's bring it over to John in his DJ booth. Okay, great. And Ken, what what is I want to talk about opening this city, right? What do they want to talk about? Well, let's find out. We're probably going to have a caller calling in right now. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, well, let's say they they want to talk about uh, let's see badminton. So uh, we'll say I want to talk about opening the city, and they'll talk about badminton. This is radio callers. We'll take it away, ladies and gentlemen. It's time clearly to reopen America. And I know everyone's got an opinion and that's why you're listening to this radio show and the, the board is lighting up. So I'm going to go to caller number one. Caller, what do you think? Should we reopen businesses? You're on the air. Yes, I do think that we should reopen businesses. I mean, it's much, it's much too late. I've been missing badminton practice every week. Uh, my game has been off. And my home court is just not enough for practicing. I mean, when I get back to the gym, the badminton gym, I mean, I'm not even going to be able to serve the birdie. All right. I haven't been able to get my um, my handcrafted badminton racket because of this. Man, you know, I'm sorry. I'm going to I'm going to cut you off there. We, we want to really keep it focused on whether or not we should open up America. Obviously, people have different hobbies that yeah. they're being taken away from, like badminton. Um, I'm, I'm gonna open up the call to caller number two. Caller number two, you're on the air. What do you think? Um, hello, uh, I'm on the air? Yes, sir. Okay, um, yeah, I was just calling in because um, you know, you're talking about uh, reopening the state. That's something I personally can't wait for. You know, I wanna get out there, um, keep petitioning the, uh, the city of LA to um, open up more uh, badminton courts, um, what? like, uh, like, you know, I just think it's, it's kind of a rare sport, you know, like, like what other, uh, what other sport do you, do you get like a racket and something that isn't a ball, you know, like it's, it's, it's very high skill. I think, uh, much more skillful okay. than tennis. Okay. Understood. Tennis, ping pong, there are many other examples. Uh, well, thank you, sir, for your input to everybody out there, you know, badminton seems to be on the brain today, but really we're focused on the issues at hand, which are opening up the government. I see caller number three. Uh, you're on the air, caller. Yes. Hi. I would just like to say I would want to reopen the cities again because my five-year-old has been missing out on his badminton practice. Like, he really needs to get a serve on point. You know, caller number one, what I'm talking about. Like, I've been taking him Wait, to practice. Wait, is caller number like one still on the air? Caller number one, are you? did I forget to disconnect you, caller number one? Yes. Yes, you oh. did. Oops. Continue caller number three. Um, so I need to take my five-year-old to badminton practices. He needs to get that serve on point. He also needs to get brand new birdies from like different types of stores we need to get to from. Yeah, we just need to get that badminton down so he could become a professional badminton player so that when he grows up, he can finally become that sportsman that I want him to be. Like, okay. it's just been so difficult. I appreciate, I appreciate that. You know what? Can we, can please, please, America, is there anyone out there who has a call that's not related to badminton that's just pertaining to opening up the country? You know, John, I don't think there is a call out there uh, for that. But uh, this show's about wrapped up, and we have to go to our next show, which is coming on, which is DJ songs. Uh, why don't you uh, set up that uh, DJ for us?
Fantastic, Kent. Uh, so this next game, uh, super exciting. Uh, we're going to get to see a radio station that specializes in a really silly subject, um, a subject that no radio station specializes in. And let's say this next radio station is going to specialize in songs about uh, homework, songs about homework. And we're going to dip into this radio station right now in this game with Rain, Riley, and John called DJ Songs. Take it away, DJ. What's the topic of this radio station? The topic is homework. Yes, hello everyone to to today's tune in of homework radio station. This is all topics about school, history, math, language, you name it, and it's your homework. Work. Now let's listen to some great groovy music for this homework. This next song coming up is called My My Poor Dog dog and it's in the style of drama maybe something happened to the dog relating to homework my poor dog my poor dog my poor dog ate my homework oh no oh no yes he did no he did yes he did he did indeed my homework it's gone the dog has eaten again Yes, that was very good, and I'm sure you all liked it very much. Very relatable that we can all have said we experienced that. This next song um, is called Exams Are Terrible, and it's in the style of reggae. My exams are horrible. Wow, wow. Exams are horrible. Wow, wow. But you have to a some. Wow! Yes, again, we can all have that feeling of feeling that we must ace that exam. Now that's the end of this this first DJ DJ homework radio, and I'll see you guys next time. All right. Well, good. John, the next uh, the next game here is a uh, pro and con. On uh, we're going to go cut, cut to our TV affiliate station. Uh, the pro and con today is about water versus ice. So let's go back to John, our host, to set that game up. Okay, great. So super simple. Justin is going to be pro water. Claire is going to be pro ice. We are going to have a debate, like a TV debate, like you might see on CNN or Fox News. And we're going to start right now. Let's have Justin and Claire bring their mics and cameras up. Tonight. The subject, water, ice. Which is right? Which is better? Only one will prevail. Justin, your thoughts, water versus ice. All right, I believe that water is clearly superior to ice, all right? Water, water, uh, sorry, water is superior to fire and ice because water is just, it's the, it's the stuff that makes up everything on earth. Uh, there's, you know, there's a reason why we call it the blue planet. Water makes up everything. It's H2O. It's, it's a me. perfect symbiotic balance. Justin, Justin, excuse me, Claire, why do you call it the blue planet? As, um, as Elsa, I personally think ice is so much better uh, for the planet and just for everyone's well-being. Sometimes you just got to let it go and, you know, see what ice does for you. Wow, Elsa's entire family has been brought together much closer because of ice. What do you have to say to that, water person Justin? You know, I, I frankly really disagree with that. You know, like um, climate change, global warming, uh, this world is slowly melting the ice caps. It's like the earth hates ice. It wants more water, all right? And, and in a few years, we're going to be a water world, all right? It's just, it's clear. Everybody knows that water will prevail over ice. You know, ice is going to become extinct someday. And I think that... Uh, you if you could let your ice come in contact with your ice powers, maybe your opinion would change because I don't see your ice castle on top of a mountain, don't I? Let me, right, let me, you know, let me just, no, Justin, excuse me, let me step in because this is a cordial show. Let me ask you a question, Claire. Have you ever had water with ice? You mean Elsa? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, I Elsa. I, I don't drink water. I just lick ice from Okay. Uh, from okay. 
Justin, have you ever had water with ice? Uh, no, I haven't. I believe that water is pure. It not need ice to enjoy water, okay? Water is water, and to put ice to somehow make it colder is unnecessary when I, you can simply drink water no, by itself. The cold never bothered me anyway. I know that lyric well, Elsa Claire, and I want you to both look down because the meals that you just ate, we replaced your water with ice and we replaced your ice with water. Both of you have just imbibed the one form of <laughs> that element that you deny is right. How feel you now? I'm horrified, John. How could you? I'm horrified. To think that I, I, I put you in my worst enemy. Because of this. Say that again, Claire. Arendelle will fall because of this. Okay, that must be something about the second one that I don't know yet. And <laughs> that is pro versus con. Fantastic, good job, thank you. All right, our, our next game is back in my day. Uh, is that right, Kent? It is. That's and back in my day, and the suggestion I got for you guys is video conferences like Zoom or Facebook, because uh, everybody's, everybody's doing video Zooming now. Uh, so you set up the game back in my day uh, when we didn't have video Zooms. Go ahead and set that up, John. That's yeah, like so these are all old people who are gonna tell us what life was like when they were young. And the first thing that they're going to say that they did not have when they were young um, is going to be video conferencing, just like we're using right now. So video conferencing slash Zoom is our suggestion. The game is back in my day. Uh, who would like to go first? Go ahead, Eddie. Hold on. Just let me get my reading glasses on. I can't see anything now. These are sunglasses anyway. Back in my day, we didn't have this Zoom conferencing call stuff. If we wanted to talk to one of our friends in, uh, without being in person, we had to get the old corded phone and we'd tangle ourselves up and trip and fall and go to the hospital. Back in my day, we didn't have tripping and falling. Whenever we stubbed our toes on rocks, we would just fly away into space. Back in my day, we didn't have the Elon Musk's company, SpaceX. We hadn't even gone to the moon yet. But back in my day, we didn't have the moon. We just had the sun and the stars, and that was it. Back in my Back day, in my we did day. not have the famous lullaby, twinkle, twinkle, little star. We merely cried ourselves to sleep as our parents were screwing around in the next bedroom. Back, in my, day, back in my day, we didn't have the Star Spangled Banner. It was just a banner, really. It was a, you would have, anyone would have walked by this banner and would have thought, oh, just a banner. Back in my day, we didn't have banners. If we said if we wanted to say something, we would just get the good old Molotov cocktail and throw it at a politician's house. And, Back and in my oh, day. how bright Back the fire day. would burn. Back in my day, we didn't have politicians. We didn't live in a corrupt society. It was much better back then. Let's go back. Back, Back in my, in my day. day, we didn't have society. We just uh, ran around naked in the woods and we, uh, we ate deer. And we, uh, Back we in my day, we Back didn't my... have woods. We just had grass all over the place. Back in my day, we didn't have grass. We just had a rock. We were all, we all lived in the center of the rock. We didn't have the famous actor and wrestler, The Rock, the Dwayne Johnson. We only had the original from the 1970s Oscar award. Back in my day, we didn't have the 1970s. All we had were the 1960s. And then 10 years later, all you crazy kids Back got the in my day, we didn't have time that went forward. It was all relative and went backwards and up and down, too. Okay, Back in my, my day, we'll, we'll, we'll we call it right there. Time. Eddie, we'll call it right there. Good. That was back in my day. Once you get a bunch of old people together reminiscing, it's hard to stop them. But that was a beautiful, beautiful game, and I loved it.
Uh, all right, Justin Riley and uh, and Rain, you're going to come up next. Um, and this is film noir, right, Ken? That's correct, John. I've got a uh, suggestion that was sent in by the audience. It's about broken glass. So your scene is going to have something to do with broken glass. So why don't you set up the game? Okay, great. So this is a film noir scene where we're going to do a parody of old movies, old black and white detective movies. And something has usually been stolen from someone or taken. And we're going to say that broken glass was taken from someone. And we'll say that, uh, Riley, you, uh, your broken glass was stolen, okay? And Rain and Justin, you are detectives, and uh, you're gonna try and uh, listen to her case and decide if you wanna take it. All right, and periodically, they may go to the audience and tell you what they're really thinking in a personal aside. And this game is called Film Noir Broken Glass. Take it away. I don't know where it went. My broken glass just disappeared. I, I don't know. How well, how well did you know this broken glass? I've known it for my entire life. And when was this you... glass broken, you could say? Was it just shattered one day and you found it that way? Or had it always been that way? As if it's it was just always been broken. What? It's just always been broken. I see. But now your broken glass Marianne. is broken. Say it again, Justin. It's very interesting. Did you did you have a relationship with this broken glass? We're best friends. I I see. Something was fishy about this broken glass. I'd seen broken glass before, but none like this. She made me suspicious. Hmm, miss. Ma'am, if seems we are to find your broken glass. Uh, something uh, struck me as uh, rather interesting. Uh, how did this glass become broken in the first place? I'm not sure. It's just always been broken. 20 years ago, I had broken, uh, I had punched through some glass and it had broken into tiny little shards like, like ice cubes in a cup of water, water, or like the swirls in a lollipop. Ma I was, I was even more interested in this case. Something about how my fellow detective and our and our uh, customer was reacting. They they seemed odd. They, it seemed like they were involved in some way. They they were it's very suspicious. Like like a like a pair of M and M's in Iran. Miss, how long have you known your broken glass? Since the day I was born. I remember reading it I like see. it was yesterday. I see. She was, I knew it, at this point I knew it was my broken glass because it had been that long ago and that many years her age since I had broken that glass and it would all line, line up like a tightrope or a line in a mass problem of geometry. I was about to question our customer further. But then I heard that distinct noise, a distinct noise of glass crunching under my fellow detective's boots. I only merely had to look at her boots to realize that it was her who had caused this mishap. I, I was the one who took your broken glass, miss. I, I broke the glass in the first place. I knew- You did what? Why did you do such a thing? What? How could you do such a heinous crime? Um, I'd never liked, I never liked the glass. I felt that he needed to be broken to understand what it was like, like to be broken glass, but I see that it was a mistake because it only brought him more happiness. But now I That's just glass. found this out to take the broken glass as yesterday, and here that it is. Glass had a future. What? That glass had a future, and you took that from her. A future with me. Scene, okay, good. It was a great game, a wonderful game. I didn't know how to call a scene, but I had to call it at some point, so I did. I leaned in and called scene confidently, and that's how the scene ended. Okay, uh, good, good. So let's do our next game, which is video dating. Um, so uh, we've got uh, uh, four uh, uh, young ladies who are gonna get ready, and then I'm gonna talk to Eddie, who is going to be the person uh, 
Uh, well, we'll call him our bachelor. So uh, without further ado, uh, I think we should just take away the, uh, do this video dating, right, Kent? That's right. I think we have Eddie. Uh, uh, Eddie will tell you a little bit about himself, John. And then, of course, each of the uh, ladies we brought in uh, through our Internet search will be telling you a little bit about them. Then Eddie can ask them a question. And I have a question from the audience that we'll have for round number two. So you can come back to me for the round number two question from the audience. Super so simple. Eddie, welcome. You're looking for love, aren't you? Uh, yes. Hello there, sir. Uh, my name is Eddie Breslin. I am a esteemed hunter of 11 years. I've bagged many an animal. I'm sorry. Uh, it just went off without warning. Uh, my most recent catch actually was this here wild chicken. Um, I've, I've cooked it up. It was absolutely delicious, let me tell you. Okay, great. I asked you if you are looking for love, and you showed me a decapitated chicken, and you accidentally well, fired a weapon. Sir, okay. I understand why you're single, but don't you, get to, don't you get sassy with me, because I've got four bachelorettes for you, even though you're a saucy fellow. What do you want to say, Eddie? Sir, all i got to say is the quickest way to a man's heart is chicken dinner and a firearm. That's, that's all i got to say. <laughs> okay, well, you've already got those two things, so it seems like you've done, you've brought love into your own heart, and so let's meet I'm one of you. my own heart. Well, that's step one. You have to love yourself to allow the other people to love you as well. So, Eddie, if you're ready, let's meet Bachelorette, as it were, number one. Oh, Great. hello, young boy. My name is Patsy. Uh, um, nice to meet you, ma'am. Yeah, Patsy, why don't you just tell us something about you that we should know? I am a professional expert in backyards, and I am twice divorced. Okay, sorry to hear the, about the divorces, but happy to hear about the backyards. Um, must have been really fun in the second marriage to get to design a new backyard. Uh, who's oh, fun to design a backyard, sweetheart. I bet so. Uh, Bachelorette number two, come on out and tell us something about yourself. Yeah. Hi. What's your name? Hi. My name is Cynthia. My location must be kept a secret. It's a national security threat. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's that's obviously what you might call some baggage, Eddie. Um, would you ever be with someone who is a national security state whose life is a national security issue? Well, I mean, I think it. I think it depends on um on who on who exactly they're uh, they're sporting, you know, like um like like which which uh, maybe like presidential candidate, you know, like what their politics are. Yes, yes, like 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 depending on which side they're they're meddling with, maybe. Um, okay, so you're already jumping in. You're already jumping into like weeding out these girls via politics. All I will say is this: don't tell them your politics. Uh, uh, twenty twenty, baby. <laughs> well, she no. I. I tried to keep it apolitical, but as now she that's opened, woman after my own heart. <laughs> that's right. She she recognized your accent and she uh, she made a, a informed gamble. Uh, all right, let's meet number three. Number three, come on out. Hello. It said in our horoscopes that we would meet. Uh oh wow. Uh so it looks like number three is a psychic who's coming out of the gate saying that she uh, this was foretold by the. <laughs> by the horoscopes. I just knocked over some tennis balls. This uh, joker you that? proclaims we were meant to be together. Okay, so she says she's a the she just pulled the card that proves that you should be together. Eddie, any thoughts on that? Uh now I don't I don't take stock into all that um all that like that mumbo jumbo with like the the, the psychics and all that stuff, but I mean I mean, if you're like, if you're like going out there and you're like, you're hunting and you're making some like deer rituals to like make, make, make it so that there's more deer in the forest next season. Like, I, like I get that, you know, like, it's just like a nice, it's just thoughtful. Okay. And what's meet number four, our fourth and final bachelorette. Uh Oh, <laughs> she's, she's, and she's got to unmute herself. Oh uh, ma'am, you have your head in the trash can. Unmute yourself, uh, number four, so we can hear what you want to say. Wow. Well, it could be that this is 
just who she is. John, I'm in awe. I'm in absolute awe. I think I have found the winner. <laughs> uh, uh, number four, can you unmute yourself, number four? Oh, I'm so sorry. I was saying hi. My name is Xylophone. <laughs> I am a editorial model in Los Angeles, and I recently got back from a photo shoot that was um, supposed to symbolize how our society is trash. And so um, they actually let me keep some of the accessories from the shoot, which is why I'm uh, wearing this. Oh, I see. Now I don't, I don't know too much about that, uh, that, that city, that society life. I mainly just uh, stay out in my cabin in the woods. You know, got my backyard, got my dogs. And I've got my, my rifle, which I go out and I hunt. Okay. Oh, uh, it, it, I have dogs too. Yeah, Eddie, you don't have to sell yourself to these girls. Okay, they're already on board. They're, they're by nature of them I, being here. I'm they're sorry, on board. John, but my whole life I've had to sell myself to girls for them to take any interest in me. It, okay. It's a little. It's a nice change of no, pace. Is number all four, go away. Number one, come back. Eddie's having a Eddie's having a crisis. And he's having a therapy uh, moment where he's having an epiphany about his emotional uh, uh, the depths of his emotions. Eddie, real quick, what's a question for Claire? Or I'm um, sorry, number one. Betsy? Betsy, sorry, Betsy. Patsy. Patsy. I got a question for you, Betsy. Um, <laughs> now, now what, what, is your favorite, what is your favorite breed of dog? Well, you know, I have a lot of favorite, I have a lot of favorite breeds of dogs. You know, I have very big backyards all over. I'm a backyard expert, you know, so, uh, Backyard experts you know, always have to have dogs. Uh, but probably my favorite dog would be the Doberman, or maybe the Lab, or maybe the Golden Retriever. I don't really know. I that's, love all of them so much. I just. Well, that's too bad. That's too bad, Eddie, that number one looks like she uh, is indecisive. Uh, or maybe no, I mean, I mean, all the ones she said, those are very good hunting dogs, very I good like trackers. If I had the chance to keep every dog in the world, I would. Okay, but very kind. Uh, uh, number two, uh, Eddie, question for number two. Uh, number two. Um, Tr question about Trump's agenda specifically. Yeah, uh, yeah. Policy. Uh, number two, what do you think about uh, about our, our great... Uh, President, leader, God, man, about his uh, about his his statements and his uh, his his readings. He's he's great. Um, he's done a lot for this country. He, I mean, how he's solving this SARS virus that is affecting us all a lot. How does this affect you, Eddie? How does it react? Well, I mean, I mean, I I appreciate that uh, that 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 sh that we see eye to eye politically. I mean, I I've been affected by this virus that much since I'm out I'm out in them backwoods, and um, and I can tell you probably aren't affected by much either since you're hiding from the government for probably undisclosed crimes and terrorism. But um, <laughs> okay, but, moving on, moving on from terrorism <laughs> to number three. Number three, come out real quick, Eddie. What's the question for number three? Uh, number three, um, uh, am I going to do well on this upcoming hunt this season? Uh, tell me your horoscope, young man. I, I don't know much about them horoscopes. <laughs> um, I... You, sir, seem like an Aries, a hunter, a fierce young. Yes, yes I, I you am, will I do well. Hunter. You will kill all the deer, but remember the well, deer might we come back for some back so revenge. they'll come back next season. No, okay. Uh, what? What was that about deer coming back for revenge? The deers will knock down your house and eat you alive for killing all their not parents and cousins. Not if I got my rifle on me. Hey, man, this is America. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, uh, this is a, you know, we, we've had a lot of complaints online that we've only tried to help liberals find love. And so we found this guy and we really want to help him. And, and this, with this uh, ex show expanding political perspectives. Real quick, number four, what's your question for her, Eddie? Uh, number four, hello, are you there? Hi, sorry, I just uh, I got back from uh, another shoot. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. how are you? Um, if you were in like a life and death survival scenario, 
what what mm-hmm. what would be the first thing you would do? Like the first like supply gathering sort of thing or like rescue thing? Um kombucha. What? Kombucha. Now I don't I, I like I said, I'm no city boy, but I ain't never heard of no kombucha. Okay. I, Eddie, I ain't never Eddie, heard don't of bring up Eddie, don't don't get political with her. Unless you want to hear the truth, because she's drinking I kombucha. Just, I don't. I don't know what a kombucha is. Rhea, don't unnecessarily volunteer your political beliefs that are antithetical to his right now. I just want to know what in tarnation is a kombucha. I don't support the U.S. government. I don't participate in normal society. I try not to participate in the economy. I, I, just, I don't but, like money. So. But you were just talking about some kombucha. I I never heard of what that is, and, and I'm pretty sure that's some that's some city person thing. Because I've I've been out in the wild my whole life. I, I, it's, it's it's that it's important. Ma'am, are you speaking Spanish or something? I don't know what a kombucha is. It's it just is. Okay, good. On that note. Oh, okay uh, then. That makes check. sense. Let me let me check in with Kent. What do you think, Kent? For time, should we do the second question, or should we we ask him for a decision? Uh, well, John, now? I've I've gotten some notes from the producer uh, that they're very very worried about our talent coordinator and how they found these people. <laughs> so I think Eddie is going to need to make a decision of who uh, who he would like to do. And uh, Eddie, this is kombucha. Just see, it's a drink. It's a drink. It's not some sort of conspiracy theory. Yeah. So uh, I think Eddie's got to pick someone. And John, if you could uh, get reactions from each one of the bachelorettes and then maybe a final word from Eddie. Okay, great. Eddie, give us a decision. Um, who would you like to pick? Would you like to pick the, the, the MAGA person, the psychic, uh, the trash anarchist, or the backyard designer? <laughs> I'm a backyard oh, well. expert, sweetie. Yeah, the, the twice-divorced backyard expert. Now, um, this is a very, very tough choice. I mean, there's a lot of good options here. I, uh, you know, uh, numbers one to three are very, very nice people. I'm not sure what's going on with number four. She's speaking a different language or something. Um, I think that I'm going to have to pick, uh, number one, the backyard expert, because I, I love a woman who knows what? her way around them backyards. Cause I mean, my backyard's pretty large in my house. And I like there's there's always these like infestations and I just need someone to help help me figure it out. And she knows she knows her dogs as well. I need I need a hunting dog. So Okay, wow. This is the most informed and logical conclusion I've ever seen someone come to at this sort of a game. Real quick well, I mean I like to think of myself as a pillar of logic. You know, I've spent my whole life out in these wildernesses and, and um I think I'm very pretty smart. All right, psychic, final thoughts, couple words. I am going to ship you this quarter that pronounces you dead in few weeks. As soon as you touch this, you will die immediately. I hope oh, it works. Oh, thanks for warning me. Now I'm not going to touch it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, weird. That was, uh, again, we did not vet these people, and uh, it was Craigslist thing. That's a murderer. Uh, we also, What's you also did. Craigslist. Surprisingly, you didn't pick the girl living in the trash can who wants to overthrow basic civilization. Uh, that was a good it, choice, but I don't live in basic civilization. Um, I, mean, I I'm a... wish that your chakras disalign. Screw okay. you, Texas man. Man, okay. that's a pretty big word. I'm going to need you to break that one down for me if you want to threaten me properly. All right. It's always difficult to tell if Eddie's characters or if Eddie doesn't know the word chakra or kombucha. Uh, and what let's do you think, John? <laughs> let's move on to the other person you didn't pick, which was Olive, uh, who, of course, lives off the grid. Uh, Olive, final quick thoughts. I've killed men before. I'm not afraid to do it again. Oh, my God. What was that in the background? Do you have some monster in your in your room? Uh, I don't know. It's pretty scary. Uh, John, <laughs> and- all these ladies are giving me death threats. All right. Uh, now, now, now. I have not. I have, I have found. I have found. I have found the love of my life on this show today. But but I, I I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need you to 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 get all these ladies, all the rest of them, and round them up into prison. They've done nothing but threaten me this whole time. Except okay. For, except for except for except for Betty. 
We'll live the rest of our happy lives in my favorite backyard. Fantastic. That's video dating. Good job, everybody. Thank you very much. Now let's move on to our next game. Now this game involves Rhea and it's called Press Conference. So let's have Rhea come back up. Okay, Hello. great. Hey, Rhea. Um, Hi, thank, John. How are you? I'm well. Thanks, everybody, who's continuing to watch. I know I haven't addressed you directly, um, but I, I know you're there, and I appreciate you watching. Rhea, she's going to be guessing in this game. Now, Rhea, we're going to send you out, while, and you're going to turn off your audio um, mm -hmm. and your screen while we do this. Not quite yet, but the way I'm going to get you wow, back John, is... John, this is so crazy. I can't even hear you. Okay, but not yet. And the way I'm going to bring you back in the room <laughs> is I'm going to type in the chat, come back in. Um, so that's how you'll know that we can bring you back in because uh, you're going to turn off the audio uh, here, Rhea. Cool? All right. So let's turn off your audio now, Rhea. Okay. So I guess Sherry did that, and I'm the one who looks stupid now. Uh, Rhea, is your audio off? Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, I okay. think it's off, John. Yes, I think it's off. And John, her you mic don't look stupid, by the way. <laughs> her mic is still on, but her audio is off. That's what confused me. So right. from Kent right. and from the audience, let's find out what celebrity or historical figure Rhea is. Okay, John. Uh, the suggestion I got from the audience is she is Jennifer Aniston. From okay, Friends from, Spain. from Friends, Jennifer Aniston. All right, good. And, oh. uh, Okay, she just heard that. Thanks, Rhea. I heard that. Sorry, I turned on oh, my, my microphone too quickly. Okay, yeah. Oh, thank so, God she did. I didn't know who that was. All right, so Rhea, like I like I said earlier, if you can still hear me, I'm going to notify you in the chat. Can you hear that? Okay. Okay. So, okay, so I will notify you in the chat when to come back. I think maybe you muted me earlier and didn't hear that either. Um, so we'll do another one. And Rhea, you can't hear me, right? Good. Rhea? Okay. Good. Um, I can no longer hear you, John. That's good. People watching this are gonna be like, "Just please move on." Uh, <laughs> let, let's say, let's say that Rhea is who, Kent? What's our replacement for Jennifer uh, Aniston? Okay, she'll now be replaced. She'll be Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts. Okay, a star. I think they they might know Julia Roberts. And, and no. Who, well, you'll figure it out, Eddie. Eddie's now Julia Roberts. I know. Well, well, Eddie lives out. Eddie lives out in the middle of nowhere, and living uh, in backwoods, baby. Be, okay, so let's let's go. How about somebody? Let's see, somebody they're going to know now. Uh, Elizabeth how about, Warren? You guys all know Elizabeth Warren. What do you think? All right, Elizabeth okay, Warren. Yeah, I think Elizabeth so. Warren. Okay. Okay. And uh, Kent, it's got an announcement. Uh huh. An announcement. She invented a vaccine for COVID nineteen. Who's she dating? Okay, John. Yep. And she's dating Mickey Mouse. Okay, it's so a, a, okay. so we're this Wait, game is 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 she Julia Roberts or is she Elizabeth Warren? So she's going to be Elizabeth Warren, okay. and uh, her announcement is that she made a COVID nineteen vaccine, and she's dating Mickey Mouse. Okay, everybody's got that. Um, now this game's called press conference. So we're going to give her. Uh, clues and help her guess. Um, so audience, sit back, enjoy watching Rhea, Rhea try and figure it out that she is Elizabeth Warren. She came up with a COVID-19 vaccine. And of course, she is dating Mickey Mouse. I'm going to type in, come back in right now. All right. Hey, Rhea, welcome, to your, welcome to your press conference. I have members of the press here. Members of the press, raise your hand when right. you have a question and take it away. This is a press conference. All right. Um, the person with the excellent haircut and glasses. Thank you. John Darden from LA Connection Times. Uh, Hi. How does it feel to be the best political candidate, candidate there is? I am um, Joe Biden. <laughs> Nope, that's incorrect. Keep guessing. Um, can I? Uh, I'll take the uh, the boy with the uh, the blonde hair. <clears throat> uh, hello. Um, I was Hi. wondering your thoughts on uh, dropping out of the presidential race uh, for this year. I am Bernie Sanders. <laughs> um, I would like to call on the man with the glasses. 
Unmute yourself, Justin. Steve Stevenson, National Magazine. Uh, how do you feel about uh, people referring to you as the spinoff version of Hillary Clinton? I am Elizabeth Warren. Hey, Yay. that's correct. All right, now we're going to get some more questions from the press, and Elizabeth Warren is going to have to guess what her announcement is. Let's keep going. Hands up, press. It was a very exciting announcement today, but first we'll take some questions. Um, I'll take the uh, the girl with the glasses and the purple pen and the pink sweatshirt. Yes, hi, Cringy Minji here with my friend Octopus. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if you're going to have it for free or are you just, are you going to make it expensive? What's going to go on? I am having a baby. No. All right. Um, uh, you in the all black? Yes, hello, Maxine here. Mm -hmm. Very nice to meet you. That's all I have to say, Maxine. I am creating the coronavirus vaccine. Yay! Yay. Very good, very good. All right, impressive. Who's she meet? dating? Yeah, who's she dating? All right, I'm also dating someone very special to me. Um, I'd like to call on you with the other uh, three paintings in the background. Hi. Yeah, hi. Um, I would like to know what it's like dating somebody from Disney Channel. I am dating Walt Disney. No. Um, I'd like to call on the girl with the goggles. Hi, yes, Penelope from Backstroke Magazine. Uh, I just would like to ask, um, how are you dealing with the height difference? I am dating a hobbit. And the second no. question, can I, I'd like to call on the chicken. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. I was just, um, <clears throat> I was, I was just, uh, I was just calling to check in, um, uh, because I heard that you were dating a former associate of mine. I mean, I he kind of got ripped all my names out of the books, but I mean, I just I need to contact him. Okay. I am currently dating Chicken Little. No. no. Somehow we have more. Um, oh, I'd like to. May I please uh, take questions from the donkey? Yes. Uh, you just see, spoke to a friend of mine. Uh. So, us all in the animal community would like to ask. Um. How is it uh, dating someone not of your species? Sorry, what? How is it dating someone that's not of your species? I am dating Shrek. No. Yeah, the, uh, per the person you're dating is a lot a different size than Shrek, right? Um. Okay, I will take a, a question from a female guest. Uh, yeah, Olive, go ahead. Yes, Sam from Spiders Weekly. How does it uh -huh. feel dating someone that never wears a shirt, even when out in public? I am dating um, Mickey Mouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did it. yeah. All right, you did it. Put it all together, Rhea. Uh, Who are you? Hi, I am Elizabeth Warren. I am currently developing the coronavirus vaccine, and I am dating someone very special named Mickey Mouse. Fantastic, good job. All right, good. Now, uh, we're gonna do one more game for everybody. And this is a game in which uh, each person's gonna get a character uh, and, and it's gonna be an improvised character because they don't know what they're about to get. And then they will be that character and I will interview them in my uh, TV talk show. Um, so let's give uh, some suggestions right now. Okay, John, um, go I've got some suggestions for each one of the cast members right now, so I'll be telling them what they are. Uh, due to time restraints, you're going to have about one minute with each interview, okay? So once I okay. tell you what you are, you can go to black and get into character, guys. Rhea, you're going to be a cultist. Rhea is a cultist, and you can put that up on your screen, Rhea the cultist, or your whatever your name is with the cultist. Claire, you're going to be the animal whisperer. The animal whisperer, you talk to the animals, okay? okay. So go ahead and get in character. Justin, 
Justin, you're going to be dealing with the dark web, uh, the dark web, something you're probably on all the time, Justin, okay? And Eddie, you're going to be dealing with Bitcoin. You're a Bitcoin expert, okay? And Olive, Olive, you're a nanny. You're a nanny, Olive, okay? Um, and Minji, you're a kid's party performer, okay? You, you perform for kids' birthday parties and other types of parties. Uh, Rain, you're a conspiracy theorist. Conspiracy theorist. Rain is not on right now, but she could probably hear me. Conspiracy theorist, Rain, okay? And the last one, Riley, you are a life coach. A life coach. Okay, John, so they're all getting into character. Once they're in character, if you guys can come back up on the screen so we can see you, and then John can interview you. Uh, and again, due to time restraints, John, you got about one minute with each one of them. So, oh. so there, it looks like you've got one up there uh, on the All screen. Right, great. That's the cultist, John. Well, let's do it to it, and let's do this TV show. Um, I am here live uh, uh, with Zach, uh, the Darden worshiper. Um, Zach, how are you? Zach? Okay. Good. Zach, uh, uh, real quickly, tell us what your religion is all about. Um, I am part of a uh, minority religion. It is a um, one of the many branches of Protestantism. I um, I follow Dardanism, where we worship our patron saint John Darden of the LA Connection Comedy Theater. He uh, he is a great man, and we uh, we pray to him each and every night. He. Um, he he speaks to me in my dreams, and I just I, I love John Darden very much. Okay, I think we've heard enough, and I know our listeners have heard enough, but they want to know uh, uh, what what's a phrase that you say? Uh, you know, some religions say Hallelujah or Amen, or uh, uh, what, what's a phrase associated with this uh, Darden worship? We just say John. Okay, well, thank you very much. It's always interesting to meet the leader of a cult devoted to yourself, um, and it is personally validating. So thank you. John, we got uh, an animal whisperer up here. Uh, let's go to the animal whisperer. Uh, let's go to the animal whisperer, yeah, the cultist. Here are you cool dogs and puppies. Here are all you cool dogs and puppies. It's me, Madge Robbins. Hey, Madge Robbins. I'll get straight to the point. You love animals, right? I do. And what's your favorite animal? Um, probably all of them. And what? And and do you think all dogs go to heaven? Yes, I really do. Um, dogs are just probably uh the reincarnate of God. And on the uh, recent Netflix show, uh, Tiger King, you were painted as a murderer, and everyone in America hates you. Any response? I am no murderer. I mean, the dogs love fresh meat. That's all. Okay, good. Horrific as always. Who are we going to next, Kent? We got a life coach for you. Let's bring on the life coach. Uh, she helps people get through life. Fantastic. Yeah. You're on the hey, look, uh, we're, all, uh, we're all going through our ups and downs. What's your advice to somebody who's feeling like they're struggling? My advice is to... Keep going and never give up, even when life throws lemons, sometimes literally. At yeah, you. exactly. And I understand you have a mantra. You say to yourself this mantra to keep yourself calm. Yes, that is just keep calm. Keep calm. What a, what a smart and simple mantra. Um, and if you could, could you just tell us the biggest mistake people make in their lives? Um. I would say the biggest mistake they make is making mistakes. Gosh, so smart. Who do we have next, Kent? You know, I learned so much from that last interview, John. I'm going to probably call her. Uh, let maybe if we can keep her around after the show. Uh, we have a Bitcoin, uh, you know, with cash is getting weird these days with yeah. what's going on with uh, the economy. So we, we brought a Bitcoin expert on because maybe we'll, we'll switch to Bitcoin. <clears throat> All right, Bitcoin export indeed. Sir, I'm a novice. What is Bitcoin? Um, hello, my name is Ivan Nasasha, uh, and I am here to teach you how to farm Bitcoin. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up the Bitcoin.com, and you're going to want to invest 
in Bitcoin and maybe put a little bit in Dogecoin, but that currency is dying. You want to invest most in normal Bitcoin, okay? Okay, indeed. Now, there are a lot of other specialized coins. There's Bitcoin, there's a little Bitcoin, there's a bit by a spider coin. Um, your thoughts? Yes. Yes, bit by a spider coin is most unpreferable currency, but in certain cases you have to use it. Like for example, if you go to Australia, it is best to use bit by a spider coin because it will give you free medical insurance against the large amount of spiders living in Australia. It is very terrifying. I do not recommend you go to Australia. All right. And have you ever been able to tip an Uber driver or a Postmates driver with your Bitcoin? Uh, I have tried, duh, but... Um, it maybe not work so well. Um, some of them think you are trying to scam them, which in some cases I was, but you know. <laughs> Indeed, I know what you're thinking. Kent, who's next? Well, we have a nanny on. Uh, she's uh, dealt with all sorts of different families over the years, and let's bring her on right now with you, John, the nanny. Hey, uh, you know what? Our, our viewers and listeners all want to know, how do you make kids behave? You don't. None of them ever do. I began this job really liking working with children but now i hate them they're Some, terrible yeah it's jobs with children will do that to you uh hey uh what's a it, i know there's a certain buzzword you've discovered that when said calms a child down what are some of these buzzwords shut up and go to sleep um if you threaten them with uh stuff like um i don't know i will throw you into the pool off the off the third floor of your house. How did I know? To... I just knew it was going to be violent. I just knew it was going to be violent. There's uh, no other way, John. Well, and I, you know, uh, a lot of people know you because you're famous for all the lawsuits that have been filed against you and the way that you have cared for babies and children. Uh, luckily, everybody's okay. Everyone survived. But there's just a lot of uh, residual anger um, at your cavalier attitude of babysitting. Would you like to take this uh, moment right now to apologize? Uh, I would like to take this moment to tell the people that I've hurt, you try spending days with your children, okay? And try not to kill them, all right? I feel like things much worse would have been done if these parents had to spend this time with their terrible, terrible kids. Okay, great. Well, luckily uh, no one was killed. Uh, Kent, who's next? Yeah. I just want to thank you, John, for keeping her on the line. We were able to track her cell phone, and <laughs> we'll have the authorities picking her up after the show. Uh, we now have a conspiracy theorist, John. Uh, okay, great. Talking about conspiracies, she, I believe she's there. She's going to come on now. Uh, okay, sure. There, there she is, a conspiracy theorist. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah I'm a conspiracy well. theorist. All right. Well, you got a minute on national conspiracy. television. What's the truth? You're a lizard, John. John Luden is, is a gecko. You, you know, it all makes sense. I don't know why I came on. I just thought I might be able to prove it if I got a chance to talk to the lizard guy. You see, John, he has green, green, green eyes. Are you drawing him? They're green. Green. They're, they're green. They're, they're green. See, that's a lizard. That's a lizard, and it's green. And, and, and I bet if I cut off John's fingernail, then it'd grow back. And you want to know what else grows back? Back a uh, lizard's tails. Lizard's tails. He's a lizard, I'm telling you. Well, if I was a lizard, then I guess I'm the worst person you should have told that to. Huh? Okay. Uh, good. That was just a scary interlude. <laughs> just a scary interlude in this show. Thank you, conspiracy theorist. Kit, who have uh, we not lizard. talked to? I'll, I'll be watching you. They're going to find you out. Thank you, conspiracy theorist. Who have we not talked to, Kent? Well, our final guest tonight is from the dark web. He's got his own website, and he can tell you things about the Internet we don't even want to know. Here he is, John. Uh, Good afternoon, hey. John. Good afternoon. You need to use the dark web. Yeah, it's nice to be in, uh, you know, mainstream media. So what are, what are people using the dark web for these days? A lot of people know about the famous criminal activity. But what are some things we don't know about the dark web? Well, not many people know that uh, people use the dark web for uh, many things, uh, often to be untraceable. 
Uh, many people will, in fact, uh, steal shipments from the evaporating Toys R Us company to get the last shipment of toys that are going out there uh, because everybody, there's a, such a high demand for Toys R Us toys that people are actually using the dark web to steal these shipments online. I understand you're an expert hacker. Uh, that's right. Uh, I've hacked into the White House mainframe. You were recruited by the government. Uh, at times, yes. But you refused... You uh, are independent. You believe in, you're a one-man intelligence agency. Uh, exactly, that's right. Uh, I'm, I'm very adept at uh, hacking into many things and using the dark web for my benefits. And you're actually an android who was created in a lab by Elon Musk? I will neither confirm nor deny that statement. Okay, well that's typical android programming is when you're asked directly, you can either confirm or deny. Okay, good. Well, is there anything you'd like to say, Android, in closing, uh, to the America who is right now meeting their first Android passing as a human? Um, anything at all? Yes, uh, you are in danger, and you should watch your back. Okay, par for the course on this show. Just leaving with a uh, an open-ended threat, uh, but nonetheless, thank you, and that is our show. Uh, thank you to everybody watching. Thank you to our, our performers. Thank you to Kent. And let's, Kent, announce our performers. Sure, John. This has been a great day here for the LA Connection. Uh, again, you can see LA Connection uh, website, laconnectioncomedy.com. Our Instagram is LA Connection Theater. And you'll be seeing this on LAC Comedy on YouTube. We also have a sister station, Mad Movies Online, on YouTube. Let's bring in our lovely cast today. We have the lovely Claire. Thank we you. have the lovely Justin. Justin. We have the lovely Rain. We have the lovely Rhea. We have the lovely Eddie. The lovely <laughs> Riley. Lovely Olive. Slow down. There's Riley. There's Olive. I'm going too fast for our video editor now. The lovely Minji. And of course, I'm Ken Scove. And thanks to our host. There's Ken Scove. I look like Minji. <laughs> the, I was Minji for a second. Ken Scove and our host today. Thank you very much, Mr. John Darden. And yes, now let's bring up the whole cast to wave yeah, goodbye. Thanks, John. Everybody wave goodbye. Thank you. you. See this very soon on YouTube.